Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 8, number 103. And here uh, we were looking at the average height of males. So I know I'm in mean land. I see that word average. And I was asked to make a 93% confidence interval, which is great. But they were asking me, like, what's the sample size I need so that I will have this one inch margin of error? So I want to make, oops, 93% confidence interval. I want a one inch margin of error. So then they're saying, well, what kind of sample size do you need to make sure that happens? And we have a margin of error formula, but what we don't have is a 93% confidence interval critical value. So whenever you want to make that critical value, or I mean, I should say that um, confidence interval, we would do X bar plus or minus a T star times S over square root N, and we would want that critical value. Now for these backwards problems, this will be the one time in mean land that we actually go ahead and just swap this out with a Z star critical value. And if we look at that giant table, we have a critical value for 90% and 95%, right? We know that the critical value for 90 is 1.645 and we know the one for 93 is, I'm sorry, not 93, 95 is 1.96. But what I really want, I want to figure out what is the 93% confidence, um, sorry, critical value. I know it's between 1.96 and 1.645, and I would guess it was closer to 1.6 than it was to 1.645, only because 93 is closer to 95 than it is to 90. So if I was just guessing, I would guess it was somewhere around like 1.8. That would be my guess. Now, in order to figure that out, we have inverse norm. We can go ahead and use inverse norm, but the problem here is we need to take this 93% confidence interval. I'm going to move this down here. This is the middle 93% of my data, or I should say off of my sampling distribution. And we need to convert that to a percentile. And once we convert it to a percentile, then we can use inverse norm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my sampling distribution, or really the standard normal curve. I'll go ahead and just convert it to a z-score. And you can see that I've circled or I've highlighted the middle 93% of my sampling distribution. And so if 93% is shaded under the curve, then 7% is on the outside, and then you can see through symmetry, it's 3.5% on a side. Okay, great. So then I need to think about what percentiles are here and here. Well, if I start to think about what proportion of this, this curve is to the left of that, that first mark there, and when I say first mark, I mean this one right here that you see me um, coloring in, I would say there's exactly 3.5% to the left of that area or to the left of that mark. So that is the 3.5th percentile. Great. Now, how much is over on this marker? Well, you can imagine we took our initial 3.5% and then I added all of this area under the curve. And give me a moment to just color this in. And I got to make sure I don't lift my pen. Otherwise, it will double up on the color, which really isn't that bad of a thing. All right, if I add that 93% there, you can see that then from here on down is the 96.5th percentile. All right, great. And if I want to figure out what z-scores go with those, I'm going to go ahead and use inverse norm. So you see me doing it for the 3.5th percentile over here and the 96.5th percentile, and I'll, I'll put little dots there. And you see that I get the same number, right, basically 1.82 or 812. I get a negative version and a positive version. And that's because of symmetry, just depending on what side of the z-curve I'm on. And so that's it. I, I'm going to wind up using the positive version of this. It ultimately doesn't matter. And the reason it doesn't really matter is because you, you have a plus or minus in your confidence interval. So even if you chose the negative version when you were constructing your confidence interval, you would still get a positive and a negative version. All right, so once we have that... Then I'm ready to go. So let me scroll down here and you can see there's my margin of error formula. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we knew our margin of error was 1, right? We knew our z-score was 1.812. And if we go back, oh, excuse that beep, the people, uh, my next door neighbors are doing construction. Um, if we look at the problem, it said that the standard deviation was 2.5. So when I plug all of that in, all right, and I crunch it, I find out that I needed a sample size greater than or equal to 20 and a half. And since our sample size has to be a whole number, I need it to be at least 21 young adult males in my study. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.